Welcome to Abundant Life International Online Bible Study on the book of Song of Solomon. We are into fourth song, session five, Transforming Love. Our reading is from uh, chapter six, four till chapter eight and verse four. We'll do the recap of third song, Growing in Love, which was chapters three, uh, verse 6 to chapter 6, verse 3. Let us pray before we do that. Lord, at this time, we want to thank you that you have brought us to this portion of the scriptures to transforming love. Thank you, Jesus, for this journey of love that you have taken us through, that we have grown in love with you. And thank you for all the good things that you have done in our life. For the blessings and for the fruitfulness that you have caused in our lives. We thank you Lord that you are our lover. You are our God. And you desire every good thing to come forth from us. And together we can go into that field and be a blessing to the world. Thank you, Lord. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Even as we do the recap of the song, the third song that we did, we saw the marriage procession of King Solomon where he brings his uh, Shulamite from Shunam to Jerusalem. She matures from 30-fold to 60-fold and he praises her. We saw the marriage uh, of Solomon and Shunammite and the carriage of Solomon. And in this carriage we saw it was a company of 60 valiant men of the most valiant of Israel which we see Six is the number of man and ten is the number of law and which is the ten commandments and we see a company of people who are fulfilling the laws of God and their army with drawn out sword ready for battle. We see her uh, description a sevenfold development that happens. Her eyes are a vision, hair, dedication, and separation, teeth, meditating and dividing the word, lips, life in the blood, temples, thoughts of love, neck, tower of David, and breast speaks of faith and love. Then we came to the Garden of Eden where four rivers flow and it speaks about fruitfulness. He puts his garden in us and the four rivers are Pishon, freely flowing which means increase, Gihon, bursting forth, Hidikil, rapid and Ephoratus means faithful. We see this in Genesis 2. 10 to 14. Then we came to the nine fruit and, the sim and their symbols as Paul writes in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. If we look at the delights, delightsome of these fruits in our garden, starting with pomegranate which is love, campfire or henna which is joy, Spikenard, peace, saffron, long suffering, calamus, gentleness, cinnamon, which is goodness, frankincense, faith, and myrrh, meekness, aloes, self control, or temperance. We came to the Welsh revival and we saw in 19, early 1900 how God used this Welsh revival, there was a lot of things that were happening there. They could feel this revival. And we saw even in the church in Canada how they repented before entering the church. 
and they carried the revival in the church. So God wants us to be desperate for that revival, desperate for the healing, like the woman who would want to be healed of cancer. We saw even the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. As she touched the M of his garment, she was healed, delivered and free from the sickness which she was suffering for 12 long years. So nothing is impossible with God. As you draw near him and touch him, he can do that miracle for you. But we see the Shunammite was wandering and as we see in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. But the Shunammite missed this opportunity. She got up and she was searching for him and he was gone. She lost it. Then we see that the Shunammite is describing to others because she went searching for him and he was not to be found. So she is describing him to others. His complexion, white and ruddy. His head, fine gold. His hair, wavy and raven black. His eyes, uh, like doves. His cheeks, bed of spices, like sweet flowers. His lips, lilies, smell, uh, sweet smelling myrrh, his hands of gold set with beryl, his belly carved ivory inlaid with sapphires, his leg pillars of marble, his countenance cedar, cedars of Lebanon, his mouth most sweet. And she described him and it was so beautiful. He is in her garden now, but actually he has put his garden in her. Amen. She is complete union and communion with the king. That is what we did last week. And now let us come to the fourth song, session five, Transforming Love. Let us read from chapter six. Verses 4 to 13 first. O my, o my love, you are as beautiful as Tirza, lovely as Jerusalem, awesome as an army with banners. Turn your eyes away from me, for they have overcome me. Your hair is like flock of goats going down from Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of sheep which have come up from the washing. Everyone bears twins and none is barren among them. Like a piece of pomegranate are your temples behind your veil. There are sixty queens and eight concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my perfect one, is the is the only one, the only one of her mother, the favorite of the, of the one who bore her. The daughters saw her and called her blessed. The queens and the concubines, they, and they praised her. Who is she? She looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, awesome as an army with banners, I went down to the garden of nuts to see the venger of the valley, to see whether the wine had budded and the pomegranates had bloomed. Before I was even aware, my soul had made me as the chariot of my noble people. Return, return, O Shunammite. Return, return, that we may look upon you. What would you see in the Shulamite, as it were the dance of the two camps? Thank you, Jesus. In this section, 
we see that the Shunammite, the bride, is likened to be as, a, as an army. We see her a change that has taken place, a tremendous transformation taking place within her. Bride's beauty is praised over here. He speaks afresh to her in verse 4 and calls her beautiful as Tirza. Tirza was the capital of Samaria. This was the backslidden part of Israel. The ten northern tribes turned away and went into rebellion. <coughs> we see here a restoration. When backslidden ones turn back to the Lord, a work of restoration takes place. And we see this in Hosea 14, where the restoration of the backslidden Ephraim takes place. We see the woman transformed in this verse into something beautiful. In areas where she has been weak, we now see her strong or strengthened. It is obvious that in this verse, she is not only beautiful to him, but she is also useful to him. She has become a glorious army with banners, a warrior bride, not only bride, but a warrior bride. The banners here represent the victories that have been won in her personal life. She has now overcome in the areas where before she has been defeated. How beautiful it is. Like Isaiah 40, uh, sorry, 59, 19 says, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So we have nothing to fear. As we go on into Isaiah 60, we see that standard is the people who have arisen and are shining with the glory of God. The manifest presence of the Lord upon them. God's end time people will be as beautiful as glorious army with banners. People who will reveal the beauty and the glory of, their, of the Lord in their lives. They will look beautiful. They will be shining with the presence of the Lord and people who see them will want to be like them. Isaiah 4 to re the re renewal of Zion. In that day the branch of the Lord shall be beautiful and glorious and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and appealing for those of Israel who have escaped. Like the beautiful glorious branch spoken of here, she is in union with his character which flows and his power that flows within her. Amen. Verse 5, a mention again here of her eyes and her hair. She has overcome him with both her eyes, a picture of full vision. We see the gaze of her eyes here. This could speak of us of worship in the most holy place. This is truly love face to face, not Facebook, but face to face with the Lord. As her hair is mentioned again here, we have the thought that her separation to God has remained constant and abiding. Verse 6, a mention again here of her teeth. She has appropriated such a change since chapter 4 verse 12. She has now developed and has separated from all things that have held her back. And we are going to go on to see her maturity. Verse 7, we see her life is open to the Lord. Her life is fruitful. Colossians 3, 4 when Christ who is our life appears, then we also will appear with him in glory. Hallelujah. Amen. The joy of her lovely smile 
and purity and peace of mind can be seen in her. You will uh, Isaiah 26 verse 3 You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. This verse shows the constant uh, life of hers which is hidden in Christ. The outside skin of the pomegranate, if you see, is nothing in appearance, but it contains the most excellent of fruits and is most agreeable to the eye and mouth. Amen. Verse 8 and 9, there were many in the king's court, but above all they stood this one who became his bride, his chosen one. She was different from them all. He had chosen her to bear his seed. It is like this with the Lord and us. Like Israel, which is special to the Lord. Special to God. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 9 points out clearly that there's a high calling for her. She has to come up. She has to leave everything that entangles her here on earth. And run with him. Philippians 3, 12 to 14, verse 14. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. It is those who fully satisfy his heart who are chosen and regarded as unique. She is blessed here and praised by these others. This shows that she is recognized by those believers who are not mature or fully devoted to the Lord, completely yielded to the king, but she has yielded herself completely to the king who is her, her spouse. Verse 10, who is this that come for, comes forth like the dawn as resplendent as the sun which amplified says clear and pure as the sun we see her here conformed to the image of her beloved she comes forth like the dawn dawning of a new day darkness is gone and new light has come in her life the moon is a reflector of light we would say that she has ruled during the night season in the midst of her enemies. He is the son, that is the son of God. Malachi 4, 2, But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The army is indicative of the stars, sun, moon, stars together in the universe. The Shunammite had turned the blackness and darkness of the night into the hope of a new day. Sorrow may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 110. One, two, three. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemy. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power, in the battles of holiness. From the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. Amen. We see her as a warrior princess. Not only warrior bride, but she is a warrior princess. The triumphant bride becomes the army of the Lord. She is as fair as the moon. As she has derived all of her light from the sun, she radiates his life. A new day has dawned for her. It seems that her life here has fully merged with his. 
She is like a glorious army with banners, a victorious triumphant army. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 11, little confusion comes. One cannot be definite as to who is speaking here. But we know for sure, if it is him, then we see in this verse the purpose of the king going down into his garden. Look for the signs of new life. He is looking for the signs of new life. He is looking for the fruit of her womb. He was looking for the budding of his resurrection life within her. If it is woman, you can see her going into the field with a twofold vision. What is that? To see whether the wine, the church is flourishing. To see that the pomegranates, that is evangelism, is budding for the church and the pomegranate is a symbol of evangelism too. A burden for the church and the burden for evangelism. We see that it is a very fruitful field. This garden of nuts, it is not only garden, but it is fruitful field and garden of nuts. The Lord wants us to have the same burden as we go into the field to all we can help and the church grow and go out into the field. We are not to be stagnant. We need to grow and we need to do the work of the evangelist to do all we can to help the church grow and flourish and a burden to see new souls springing forth into life. We see here she is prepared to lay down her life for others. One cannot be definite in verse 12 who is speaking but the word chariot speaks of vehicle of movement. It is as if she has become as his chariot to carry him across the field of the earth. It is an earlier stage of her life when he came knocking at her door. She refused to get up and open the door to him. But now a change has taken place and she likens him to be the chariots of Aminidab. These chariots were known for their swiftness. She is something like the living creatures in Ezekiel 1 verse 14. And the living creatures ran back and forth. It appears like a flash of lightning. Who are servants of God moved as flash of lightning to do the bidding of their Lord. We are to become like this. And his pace has quickened. Not only the wheels were moving, they were moving in all direction and in speed. And so we need to do in that speed. We need to move swiftly for the God's glory. Amen. Verse 13. The daughters of Jerusalem speak in the first half of this verse. Here the name of Shunammite is mentioned. In this, in, this is the feminine form of masculine name of Solomon. There is a cry on her heart, heart for her to return. Here we see they, they want to look on her. They have become, been so amazed at the change that have taken place within her. Naturally now they want to know. What has happened? How, has, how it has happened? And so they are curious. We see here that she has become as company of two armies. Children of God, don't be discouraged when people look down upon you. When, you have, when the devil talks negative to you. When, you uh, when others belittle you. But arise because it is the king's vision and king's desire that you be lifted up. The sun of righteousness is shining on you and you need to be lifted up and be with him in his presence. Amen.
we see here that she has become the, as the company of two armies when the army on earth moves in these last days it is the company of two armies in other words there is the natural army and the heavenly army the church on earth and the angelic force in the heavens are moving together both together will accomplish god's will we saw in revelation <coughs> in time how the angels will come the warring angels and the angels ministering angels who will be with us they will help us we have seen many angels work in our lives and god is going to use angels to minister to us and minister with us example we see here of joshua 5 13 to 15 the commander of the army of the lord jesus appeared to joshua and revealed himself as the commander in chief of the most high the army of the lord when joshua led his army around the walls of jericho they were not alone the army in heaven was moving with him amen amen joshua did what he was commanded to do and what a miracle that was he got a few million people walking together in the same direction at the same time and he got them to the place that no one opened their mouth until they were told to shout to me that is a great miracle greater miracle than getting the sun to stand still amen the walls of jericho came tumbling down the army of god simply moved in obedience to the word of the lord and the army in heaven flattened those walls we are as the company of two armies so don't feel alone don't think that you are alone the lord is with you and his army is with you the army in heaven we see in about uh, hebrew 12 12 to 24 and daniel 4 3 34 and 35 and an army in earth we see in luke 2 13 matthew 22 31 32 genesis 28 12 John 151 The word that is used here return 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 four times four is the number of creation it is like the cry of creation Romans 8 9 crying out for the manifestation of the sons of God A Romans 8 9 but you are not in the flesh but in the spirit if indeed the spirit of god dwells in you now if anyone does not have the spirit of god he is not his let us read from chapter 7 to chapter 8 verse 4 how beautiful are your feet in sandals o princess daughter the calves of your thighs are like jewels the work of your hands of a skillful workman your navel is round go goblet it lacks no blending beverage your waist is a heap of wheat set about with lilies your two breasts are like two fawns twins of a gazelle your neck is like an ivory tower your eyes like the pools in heshbon by the gate of batrahbim your nose is like the tower of lebanon which looks towards damascus your head crowns uh, crowns you like mount carmel the hair of your head is like purple a king is held captive by your tresses how fair and how pleasant you are o love with your delights this stature of yours is like a palm tree 
and your breasts like its clusters. I said I will go up to the palm tree. I will take hold of its branches. Let now your breast be like clusters of the wine, the fragrance of your breath like apples, the roof of your mouth like the best wine. The wine goes down smoothly for my beloved, moving gently the lips of sleepers. I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me. Come my beloved, let us go forth to the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to, to the vineyards. Let us see if the wine has budded, whether the grape blossoms are open and the pomegranates are in bloom. There I will give you my love and the, the mandrakes give off a fragrance and at our gates are pleasant fruits. All manner, new and old, which I have laid up for you, my beloved. Chapter 8 Oh, that you were like my brother, who nursed at my mother's breast. If I should find you outside, I would kiss you. I would not be despised. I would lead you and bring you into the house of my mother. She who used to instruct me, I would cause you to drink of spiced wine, of the juice of pomegranate. His left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Amen. Chapter 7, verses 1 to 7, we see the king has described her from waist up in chapters 4, verses 1 to 5 and later described her in six, uh, chapter 6, 5 to 7 earlier and now describes us here the, her head to foot. Isaiah 50 to 7, how beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Her feet here, they are beautiful. And they have shoes on. The feet have to do with her walk. How beautiful on the mountain are the feet of him who brings good news. We see her here as his workmanship. As an army, we see her moving with a message. The shoe speaks of a message. An army moving on the earth with a flaming fresh message. Her joints, the joints of her thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a skillful workman. The jewels would speak to us of the wisdom and knowledge of the spirit by which you, he, she does the work of the Lord. In Ephesians 4.16, we see that every joint supplies Every joint in the body is to supply something. An army on earth is moving together as one. Every joint in the body is supplying uh, to the body. So we see the importance here of every member being involved in the body. They are joined together and forming one whole body of Christ. His navel, her navel here is, uh, this describes that she was inwardly. It is the central part of her body. It is likened to be round goblet that is overflowing with wine. We can see an army moving together 
with a message moving together as one and they are filled to overflowing with the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Her belly, this speaks of her innermost affections. The wheat here speaks of bread, the, the word of God. She is like one who has eaten the hidden manna. We have a picture in this verse of one who is just about to bring forth to birth. Her belly has become a heap of wheat. We see an army moving together with a message, moving together as one filled to overflowing with the joy of the Lord and bringing something to birth. Her two breasts, what she brings to birth, she is able to nourish in faith and in love. Her neck is like a tower of ivory. Ivory is a symbol of purity. In this verse, we see her submitted will, her anointed vision and a keen discernment. Her neck, eyes, nose, we see here her as an army moving in purity of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Her eyes are like the fish pools in Heshbon. The water in the fish pools in Heshbon was so still and clear. When one looked into the fish pool, they would see a reflection of their own person. He is seeing himself in her. She is reflecting him in the earth. There are many pools in Heshbon and they contain many fish. You can see that her eyes are open and she has a vision for worldwide evangelism. By the gate of Bethrehim, this word means a city of multitudes. Our attention here is turned to multitudes. Joel 3.14 Multitudes in the valley of decision. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decisions. Who will go and tell them? Like Isaiah we have to say, Here I am Lord, send me. Her nose is like the tower of David looking towards Damascus. We see discernment here. The nose is mentioned as all is full and ripe. She has matured now. This sense of perception is high and pointed. The watchmen would stand on the tower and they would have their eyes on Damascus where the enemies would come from. And from there we have the thought here of being sensitive to the approach of enemy. We see a, an, an army moving with a message, moving towards as one, filled with overflowing with the joy of Jesus, ministering the bread of God to those that they have brought to birth, nurturing them in faith and love, walking together in the purity of Jesus, having a vision for worldwide evangelism and reflecting his person as they move forth to reach the multitudes and being sensitive to the approach of the enemy. Amen. So in every ministry, Anything we do, we need to pray, wait upon the Lord and have the discerning spirit where to go, how to go and even have, be very sensitive to the enemy. Sometimes we marvel when danger is coming, we are approaching danger. We feel why the Lord is not informing us, why we are not told of that danger. But the word of God is saying that we need to be sensitive. We need to be in his presence. We need to know him personally. We need to grow in him. And then we can face the enemies. 
ahead a headship and submission to his headship are given here kamil can be rendered to be crimson kamil can be likened to be as a crown of glory a hair is like purple purple could speak of crown of suffering purple the color in the scripture is for royalty she is as a king and also as a priest in this verse she is the one who has throne rights the king in this verse is captivated by her dedication separation and loyal submission isn't it beautiful her pleasantness and fairness we see here that she has been conformed to the to his image and nature he is totally delighted with her her stature like a palm tree she has come to the fullness of his stature ephesians 4:13 till we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ the palm tree is a symbol of righteousness in victory psalm 92:12 to 14 the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree he shall grow like a cedar in lebanon those who are planted in the house of the lord shall flourish in the courts of our god they shall still bear fruit in old age they shall be fresh and flourishing the palm tree has roots that are in touch with a deep fountain of water It, and its root goes deep deep inside the earth it grows best when planted with others and it grows in the purest soil like the pillars here she is a royal palm amen her breast are like clusters of grapes her breast here indicates a union with him her el shaddai the breasted one and indicate this indicates her ability as the fruitful and fertile one one who is able to feed and satisfy others the thought here also is that she has yielded her all to him amen the breast will quite the restless babe and nourish and strengthen and attract she has grown to the place where she truly is satisfied with him her breast smelled of apples because she has been eating the word of god she has become one with him the palm tree here speaks of his righteousness being seen in her and we get the thought that the army of the lord is a righteous army that does that only does that which pleases him isaiah 56:4 for thus says the lord to the eunuchs who keep my sabbath and choose what pleases me and hold fast my covenant there's a blessing for the eunuchs he tastes your heart his own nature within his love verse 9 we see her here the real intimacy of her relationship reference to a wedding feast of cana in as in john 2 the best wine was kept till the last the wine of the spirit will cause the lips of god's people to begin to speak and witness the best wine is the kingdom beverage a royal beverage the king and his bride has tasted it and now the fruit of her union is about to be produced verse 10 we can link the verse together with song of solomon 216 
and Song of Solomon 6.3 and now 7.10 also we will see. We can, in the third dimension, the king is the central focus here. She is dead and her life is hid with Christ in this verse from 34 to 60 fold and in this word 710 she is entering into the hundred fold. Colossian 3 1 to 3 not carnality but in Christ. If then we who are raised with Christ seek those things which are above whereas Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on things above, not on things on earth, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. This is a great missionary verse, verse 11 and 12. We see the harvest and saving of souls and we see the bridegroom and the bride going forth with the word and the ministry. I am saddened to hear people talk about women ministry who are against women ministry and who look down upon ministry. This verse is for them. Here we see the bridegroom and the bride together in the harvest field. Together they are in the harvest field doing the work of the Lord. And they are bringing forth reconciliation. The field is the world. The two are now one. And the whole of creation will feel the impact of this. The field is right. I would encourage the men to help your women. To encourage them to move on in the ministry. She will be asset to you. And she would help you. As you lift her up, you will be lifted up. You will be the king and she will be your queen. And together you can go in the vineyard and reap that harvest which is ready, which you alone cannot do. You need your help meet. There is a concern for those living in the villages of this world. We see also the burden for the church and for evangelism. Out there, I will give thee my loves. If we come to this stage of growth in the Lord and he calls us to move out with him and we at that point refuse, then his love will not be manifest to us in the way that it would if we were obedient to his work. John 14, 21. Verse 13, we come to the mandrakes. This word mandrakes means the love of the sun. We, will, we see this in Genesis when Reuben had the mandrakes and uh, Leah traded Jacob for those mandrakes and she wanted them so badly because they say maybe these mandrakes are for fertility. Or also maybe since she was barren, she could not get sleep. She was worried and mandrakes would put us to sleep. But we see that the flower of the mandrake are purple, which speaks of royalty. There is a balance here between the new and the old. He has planned a great adventure for us, things both new and old. To experience Isaiah 64 4 for since the beginning of the world men have not heard nor pierced by the ear nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him 1st Corinthians 2 9 and 10 but as it is written Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor, has, uh, nor have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. Matthew 13, 52. Then he said to them, Therefore, 
every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of God. Heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. We come to chapter 8 verse 1. In the oriental customs of this day, it was a job of the eldest daughter in the family to look after the baby of the mother while the mother went out doing her work. She is saying that if he was like her little baby brother, she would be able to hold him in her arms and kiss him and no one would despise her. And no one would despise her doing it. And we dwell, uh, we develop our love relationship with the Lord. We find that she was often despised. There is a price to pay for us when we go out in the field and we want to see and do the work of the Lord. If you look at Hebrews 13, 12 and 13, Therefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the camp, outside the gate. Therefore let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. There is a reproach to carry. We must be prepared to do that. Now we know that transformation has taken place in our life. She desires in verse 2 that others would have the food and wine of the kingdom. Like, just like Ruth went from the presence of Boaz and ministered to Naomi, so the Shunammite longs for a manifestation of his presence in her house, mother's house. He would always be the teacher, the one that would continue to give instructions. Verse 3, he holds her in this manner. We see them in perfect union. He then speaks to the daughters. Verse 4, he will let nothing disturb his bride. He does not mention the rose or hinds here because that, that indicates with that which is timid or it talks about timidity and fear and that has been removed from their love relationship. She has matured now. Amen. She has come into hundredfold now. And we have a small portion to finish next week. We will be doing fifth song, Mature Love. Chapters 8, uh, chapter 8 verses 5 to 14 and overview of the book of Song of Solomon. First we'll finish Mature Love and then we will do the whole book again and we will see the transformation that took place in the Shunammite's life and she has come to hundredfold now. Hope you are enjoying the Song of Solomon and it's coming to an end. Let us pray and surrender this time to the Lord and ask the Lord to bless us. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for this transforming love. We thank you, Lord, that you have done a new work in the Shunammite's life. You have brought the changes in this woman from a timid, fearful person. You have changed her into a warrior bride, a warrior princess. And she has matured in her development, in all areas of her life. We thank you, Lord, that she is ready to bear fruit now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, even as she is ready, the king has held her hand and taken her into the field of the world and to evangelize and to be more fruitful. Thank you, Father, that even as the smell of mandrakes is seen, the fertility and the royalty that is working within the Shunammite is working in us too. We thank you, Lord, for the peace 
and fruitfulness that has brought complete rest into the Shunammite's life and which is a complete picture of union and communion with the king. And I pray that you will bless our people, Lord. Anoint them, Lord. Fill them with your presence. May they experience your new wine, Lord. May they be saturated by you, Lord. And yes, may Lord. they be a fertile garden, Lord. Amen. Where you, you can Lord. come, Lord. Oh, and Lord. in your garden, Shana, Lord, which is Lord. within Shana. us, O oh God. And make us more fruitful, Pray, Lord. Lord. And for the master's use. We thank you, Lord, that... Even as she has been formed, Lord, and conformed, Lord, to your image, O oh God. Make us like her, Lord. Not only 34, Lord, not only 64, Lord, but 100 fold for your glory. And let us arise, Lord, like the army with banners, Lord, ready for warfare, ready to do your will, Lord. Bless our people, Lord. Anoint each one, Lord. I pray a special blessing on the women, Lord. We pray for good health to them. We pray for a blessing on their lives, Lord. May they be fruitful, Lord. Even during this time of COVID-19, Lord. Even the stress that they have to go through, Lord. With look, looking after yes, their sure. families, Lord. Amen. Even for working from home, Lord, and there's no help around, oh God. We pray that you bless them, Lord, with your divine strength, Lord, that they would say, I can do all things through Christ who is strengthening me. Thank you, Lord, for blessing them, Lord. I bless all the women of the world, Lord, that you would make them powerful, Lord, for your glory, together with their spouses, Lord, together with their leaders, Lord. They Amen. would serve you, Lord. You. Be submissive, Lord, in your kingdom, Lord, bearing much fruit. We thank you, Lord, for each one. In Yeshua, your name we pray. Amen.